What is up, y'all? Today, we're looking at Lightroom, and I'm gonna take you through the process of how I edit my images for posting on Instagram. Lightroom is an amazing piece of software. There's so much you can do with it, but I'm gonna take you through the basics today of taking a nice image and turning it into something truly amazing. So let's jump on the computer. We'll pull up an image, show you where we're starting, where we're gonna go, and I'll walk you through that process step by step. Let's go. Okay, so this is the image we're gonna be working with today. This is me and three friends hanging out. It's a pretty magical image for me. But what we've got to start with is pretty dull and there's a lot of colors that we're gonna pull out of this image. So to give you a little taste of where we're headed, this is what the completed image will look like. Let's just start off by hitting the reset button and we'll, we'll put all of our sliders back where they began and we'll walk through this step by step. Before we start on anything, we need to crop this image for Instagram. And Instagram works in a four x five for a, a vertically cropped image. So we'll set it to that. And I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit so that we aren't seeing too much of the sides of the image just cause it's not that important. Uh, I want that reflection, I want that sky. And I'm gonna have that water line at about the third mark here. And that'll give us a nice balance to the composition. I'm roughly gonna line things up so it's center composed with the people in the middle of the image. So we'll hit done. So that's what we're gonna be working with is the baseline. I'm gonna start by just bumping the exposure up just a little bit because I can already tell this image is, is kind of dark. Um, next thing we're gonna dive into before we get into any of these sliders, I'll usually jump into the tone curve. And by default, your tone curve will probably load like this. It gives you a little bit less control, but if you click this button here, you'll get more control over your tone curve and you can put points wherever. And what's going on with the tone curve is we've got the darkest area of the image over here, the lightest areas of the image over here. And if we wanted to brighten a, a part of the image, we would click a point and drag up, or we could pull that point down to darken that particular portion of the image. If I wanted to brighten my lighter parts of the image, I could put a point about here, and I just lift that up just subtly. You don't need to do a lot of stuff in the tone curve. It's very delicate movement. And then I usually put one here to pull down just to pop contrast a little bit. I often like to fade my image a little, give it sort of that vintage look. And so if you pull this end point up, this is actually making the blackest part of the image slightly more of a dark gray. So it, it gives it that little bit of faded look. And then sometimes I will move around my mid tone area just to try to bring out the colors a little bit more. And so we can do a before and after on this. We can already see we're just getting much more pop in the sky and much more contrast in the image. So we're gonna leave that there to start. We'll jump back to the basics tab now. I'm probably gonna need to pull up my whites a little bit. And so this is gonna again add more contrast and you can look at that histogram at the top and you're, you don't wanna clip those, those tones. So once you start to see this getting to the edge here, you don't wanna go too much further or you're actually putting things to be pure white and we don't want that. So we're gonna go around there. I'm gonna raise the shadows just a little bit and that's gonna bring out some of the tones in the uh, bridge, some of that wood. We want it to be subtle. I want this to be a silhouette image. I don't wanna go all the way. You know, I could go to here and you'd see all of the different details of the people, but that's really not what I'm going for. I kinda just want the silhouettes to be the focus of this image. And then the highlights I think are, are pretty good. Sometimes I'll adjust them down a little bit to bring out a little bit more of the detail in the brighter parts of the image. Now that we have our baseline edit done on this image, we'll jump into the tone curve and we'll do a little bit more fine tuning of some of these areas. I want a little bit more contrast in those clouds. And so I play a little bit on either side of each point to try to get some some variability in those clouds. I want some brights in there. And we'll pull that down just a little bit. Don't want to go too far. So that's before the tone curve and after. That's looking pretty good. And then I really want this reflection to be a bit more uh, the focus of the image. To do that, we're going to use the gradient tool. And if you click on the gradient, I'm gonna turn off clarity here, and we're probably just gonna to try to bump the exposure a little bit there. And so we'll drag up here, and the, the way this works is at the midpoint here, that's where the transition actually occurs. It'll fade out this direction and fade out this direction. So I'm gonna put that right around that top of that water. 
And you can see, so this is with nothing applied. And we can just gently crank that up. I just want to highlight that reflection a little bit. Might play with the shadows, just a hair. I think that looks pretty nice. So this is without and with. Maybe went a little bit far in the brightness. We'll pull that back one. So I'm doing a lot of before and afters whenever I'm working in Lightroom. It just helps me make sure that I haven't gone too far with any of my edits. I think I'm going to do another gradient from the top and actually kind of um, we'll go into the darkness a little bit. This is sort of evening, so I want to make it feel kind of like the, the darkness is kind of descending on the day. So yeah, it's subtle, but these little subtle things are what really make these images work, I think. I'm going to extend this one. Stretch that out a bit more. So I really like to add a vignette to all of my images. So I do that with a custom vignette using the radio filter. And so I'll pull that out. And I'm just going to lower that down just a little bit. And every image, it's a bit different. Sometimes I'll actually apply this on a bit of an angle. This image, though, it's sort of just a centered composition. So I think we'll leave it something like that. Um, again, before and after to make sure we haven't gone too far. Sometimes I'll increase the feather on that a little bit so that it's not as noticeable. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now at this point, it's probably a good time just to take a look at our sharpening. So I'll jump into the details section. I usually apply sharpening around 35-ish, 30 to 35. That's just sort of a a good amount that doesn't feel like it's overdoing it, but we need to make sure that we are adjusting the mask. And so by default, it sharpens the entire image. But if you hold down the Alt key on a PC and you drag this over, you'll start to see what it's actually sharpening. So anything that is white, it's sharpening that edge. And you know, we don't need to sharpen all these edges in the clouds. We, we mostly just want to sharpen the people, the bridge. And so we can pull this thing quite a bit up because otherwise we're actually sharpening some of the noise that's in the image and we don't want that. So we'll leave that there. Um, that's pretty straightforward. I might apply just a tiny bit of noise reduction, not too much because I don't want the image to become super soft. And I'll probably actually pull up the color noise reduction just a little bit as well. Next up, uh, I do some split toning on my images. And this allows us to color the shadows in a, one tone, and we can color our highlights in another tone. And I often will put a little bit of a purplish, bluish hue into my shadows. Kind of in this general area, I like to you know, use as a starting point, and then I move it around depending on what I want. But we'll start here, we'll very low saturation. We don't need a ton of it. So here's without that, and here's with that. So it, it just kind of adds a little bit more magical feeling to the image for me. And I think that works quite nice. Uh, the highlights, we sometimes I'll add a bit of yellow into the highlights. I'm not sure that this image actually needs that. Let's try that. And we'll just go real low with that, just a very very subtle, but I think it makes it feel a little bit nicer. I think we'll jump back to the basic slider here. Sometimes I'll add a small amount of clarity to my images. I used to do it more, and you can see what clarity will do to this image. It'll really pop things in a way that just doesn't look that great. So often I turn it off, especially if it's a bit more of a dreamy thing. Sometimes I'll actually do negative um, clarity, but I think this image is, is fine just as is. I'm going to pop the saturation of the whole image just by a little bit. That's a little too far. That looks good to me. I don't like to go too saturated. And maybe we'll bump our exposure just a little bit more. Something like that. You know, I realize I, I didn't actually even touch my temperature and tint here. I felt like this image was actually pretty good right out of camera. But if I wanted to warm up or cool down that image, I could do it here. We can play with this a little bit and see what we get. But, you know, maybe into the blues just a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe we'll go with like negative three. And then we might actually go into the magenta just a tiny bit. We'll go positive three into magenta. So again, these are really subtle changes, but they're, they're key little changes that can make the difference in this image being great or not. Then the last thing I'm noticing, there's um, some little black specks up here, and I think these are mosquitoes actually. They might, might be bats or birds, but I can zoom in on those and just use the spot removal tool. And I can just clean these little spots up 
real quick. And there were definitely mosquitoes this evening. Just gonna go after the big ones. The one thing I'm noticing is, I like that you can see us a little bit, but I think you can see us a little too much, too much detail. And so I'm actually gonna bring the blacks down. I'm gonna lower my shadows down just a little bit just so that we're a bit more of a silhouette. Pop the overall exposure. So we'll, we'll go back to where we started. That was the beginning image that we were working with. And then this is the basic edit. So pretty close to what, what we were trying to go for. This was my, that was my actual edit that I did. It's a little bit brighter probably, um, but close to what we just produced here. So that's it. Pretty simple process. Lightroom is a scary program at first, but once you learn what the different sliders will do, uh, you can actually move through images fairly quickly and, and make them pop just that much more. Sometimes I'll bring stuff into Photoshop, do some retouching first, and then I'll pull it into Lightroom to do that final little bit, the little magic fairy dust on top of the image. If you've got any questions about my process or how to use Lightroom in general, just drop them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. Uh, but until the next video, have yourself a great week, and I'll see you soon. Peace.